Hi, I'm Terry Naturally, and I'm glad to be back with you again today. And thank you for joining me. We're going to be talking about a very controversial subject, which affects a lot of people in America. We're going to be talking about type 2 diabetes, which actually affects about 100, well, 30 million that have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes that are on medications or drugs of some kind, could even be insulin, and even some children. And there are 100 million pre-diabetics that if there aren't some changes made, they're also going to be diabetic. Now, why do I say it's controversial? Well, first of all, diabetes is optional. It is not a disease. But because it is a disease, that makes the drug companies happy because now they can treat it with a medication or a drug of some kind. But why is it not a disease when it truly is a metabolic disorder? It's based on how we live, our lifestyle choices. Now, type 1 diabetics are true diabetics. It's an autoimmune disease. They are unable to make insulin, which is what, you, what is used to regulate blood sugar levels, NA1C. They have to take it artificially, usually every day. Every diabetic is different. A type 1, everyone is different. They take different levels of insulin based on their lifestyle, based on their food, based on their intake of type of diet. So it has to be regulated by a physician. But type 2 is similar in some ways. So really it is a blood sugar problem. We have way too much sugar in the blood. And when the doctors look at it, well, you're not type 1 because you do make insulin where a type 1 does not make the insulin, but a type 2 diabetic makes insulin. So what's the problem? Well, the insulin doesn't become effective. The cells become insulin resistant. Why? Well, because we eat too much sugar. It really comes down to diet and the level of activity that burns up the sugar or burns up the calories. So we are not a diabetic per se as a type 2, and it could be regulated it's effectively by diet and the level of activity. We can change the diet. In the 1900s, we consumed about four to six pounds of sugar per year, per individual, and now we are up to close to 200 to 250 pounds of sugar per individual, per year. Like one of these big drinks, you know, these Starbucks drinks that have 12 teaspoons of sugar per drink. It is, we are getting so much sugar in our diet that the insulin we produce becomes ineffective. So rather than saying to the patient, cut out the sugar, change your diet, they just give them more insulin or more of an anti-diabetic drug rather than making the changes that we need to make. So some people, I don't eat any sugar at all. And many other health conscious people, I'm sure like you listening, also are health conscious and are not, not eating a lot of sugar either. So somebody out there on a national average could be consuming a lot more sugar. Now we're just talking about sugar, sugar, all various forms. We haven't even touched on the other subject of high fructose corn syrup, which is another 67 pounds of sugar per year. So we're consuming a lot of sugar that our insulin is, longer, is no longer able to have an effect on it. So we are not producing enough insulin based on the level of sugar. So why, why increase insulin? Why not just lower the sugar? Go to a low carbohydrate diet. And I always recommend the ketogenic diet, which is a low carbohydrate diet, a, a no sugar diet, a moderate level of proteins and good quality fats. We can change the diabetic condition that we are going through. America is suffering from an epidemic of type 2 diabetes, and it could be easily changed by changing our diet. And as the forerunner of many other diseases that we could also then control better 
because we are controlling the sugar intake and the carbohydrates. So I ran across an herb that is grown in Central America and Mexico, and the natives there in those countries have been using it for decades to control the blood sugar level and A1C. Now, I'm sure they didn't really understand A1C levels at those days, but they knew it controlled blood sugar levels. But the Germans adopted that herbal product and did a tremendous amount of research. They've done over 10 quality studies on the herb called Hintonia lactiflora. Hintonia is an herb that controls blood sugar levels and A1C. Now, I have a few studies. I, I mentioned there were 10 studies. I have one study here that says the vasodilating effect of Hintonia is extract with anti-diabetic action. So that means it has anti-diabetic action, lowers blood sugar level, lowers A1C, which makes you healthier and with less complications of other diseases. And why the vasodilating? Because diabetics have a problem of circulation. They start to lose fingers, toes, actually feet, and maybe even a leg. I've seen some really good friends that have lost a leg because of diabetes. This actually improves circulation and also the anti-diabetic diabetic action of it. Here's another one. The treatment of mild and moderate type 2 diabetes, open prospective trial with Antonia extract. So Antonia is an herb that has a tremendous effect on regulating blood sugar levels, completely safe, no side effects, and works very effectively. But the longer you use it, the more effective it is. And in fact, it could be used for months, and that's the best way to get the results. In fact, when anyone goes on an anti-diabetic drug, they're going to be on it for months, maybe for the rest of their life. And all those people are saying to themselves, I'm a diabetic. You are not a diabetic. You're eating the wrong diet, and you're not getting enough exercise and activity to burn up the calories and the sugar that you're consuming. Here's, a, here's another one that I ran across that is a very interesting one. And it's, it's another one that we have here. Let me get these apart. Here's the other one that treatment of mild to moderate type 2 diabetes with Antonia. Another study for it. And why do I want you to get results? Because A1C is a marker that tells you how much sugar is in your bloodstream. And when doctors look at the amount of sugar in your bloodstream, it doesn't think about the diet, doesn't think about the level of activity, but, oh, you have a lot of sugar in your bloodstream, you must be diabetic. But you're not a type 1 diabetic because you make your insulin, so let's just call you type 2. That's how it originated. So they're a type 2 because they're not a type 1. And type 2 could be easily influenced by the diet and by the level of activity. But here's how we can make some big changes. Some very tiny reductions of A1C equals some very, very big benefits. So just a 1% one, 1 decrease of A1C levels causes a 19% reduction in the risk of cataracts. A 16% reduction in the risk of heart failure. And a 43% risk reduction of risk of amputation or death from peripheral vascular disease, which affects a lot of the diabetics. So we don't have to suffer from so-called diseases as they are only a metabolic disorder caused by what we are eating and the lifestyle we choose. We can easily make those changes. So I'm making it easier for people to understand why they should make some changes. All these studies will be listed on my website, excuse me, on my uh, Facebook live event. So you can review later, but you can also go on PubMed and just Google Hintonia, H-I-N-T-O-N-I-A, Hintonia, and you'll come up with the studies that help you to know more about how to regulate your blood sugar level. But I also write newsletters. I read a weekly newsletter that goes out every Friday to your email address. If you would like it, all you have to do is go to my website, terrytalksnutrition.com. And there you can, you can register for my um, newsletter. You can subscribe to it. It goes out to your email address every Friday. This one here is how to prevent or reverse diabetes, an amazing herbal intervention, which is Hintonia. 
Also, you can go onto my website, listen to my radio show, which is broadcast live from Green Bay, Wisconsin, every Saturday and Sunday morning, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. You can listen live if you find the time and make your adjustments on your time to be on the same time we are here centrally located in Green Bay, Wisconsin, Central Standard Time. Uh, also, you can go to the radio section of the show and you can listen to all the shows that have been archived and read all the newsletters that have been also archived on the e-newsletter section of the newsletter. But we are here primarily to kind of just nudge you or kind of wake you up to some of the uh, complications of why we are treating diseases when they're really not diseases. But it's a huge profit margin for the drug companies. All the statin drugs, drugs for diabetes, which are all based on nutrition, not on a disease per se. So they're making billions of dollars and you're suffering for it. If you have the information that you know that you can change and get off drugs, you can get off statin drugs, you can get off your medication. Now I'm not telling you to go off your drugs because that only, that's only what your physician and you can decide what to do. But if you want to get off your drugs, you can. Talk to your doctor about it. Uh, this can make a big difference in your life to get off medication that you're not even having to um, rely on medication for your type 2 diabetes when all you have to do is make some changes. No, making changes means you have to take responsibility, responsibility for your health. You know what? You are the only ones that can improve your health. You are the only ones responsible for your health. Doctors are not. Drugs are not. They're not responsible for our health. Only you and I, but I don't think enough people realize that diseases are caused by our lifestyle choices and the diet we choose. 98% of all of our diseases are caused by you and I. But what we eat, what, how with the lifestyle we choose, uh, and every day, what goes into our body? Now, food is our medicine, but also food can be our worst enemy. So go to my website, start following me on Terry Talks Nutrition, and also at Terry Lemron, which is my proper name. I also post under both of them on Facebook, uh, Facebook so you can follow them. So I want to wish you good health and know that you can make changes and you do not have to be a type 2 diabetic unless you choose to be. Diabetes is optional. Remember that, optional. That means you don't have to have it. So follow me and I thank you for being here with me. Have a nice day.